for coming. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, to you our guest tonight, uh, Diana Wiesner from Bogotá, India. Uh, I'll try to do a brief introduction uh, because of her request and also because you are here to listen to her. Uh, Diana uh, is an architect from uh, La Universidad de Los Andes in Bogotá, Colombia. She also has a master's degree in architecture from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, she also has planning studies in Japan. But uh, really, the most important uh, reason for really why she's here is her role, which has been very important in the uh, shaping of uh, Bogota and, let's say, in general, uh, uh, Colombia. She's one of the most important actors in the construction of many public spaces, uh, particularly in the city of Bogotá. Uh, but also uh, coming in as a designer that's looking at public space and uh, ecology and urban systems from the landscape architecture uh, point of view, uh, from a landscape architecture approach. Um, that's very important uh, uh, to mention. Uh, I, I think in some ways uh, uh, there are uh, many other things that are uh, also out there uh, regarding the very important uh, collection of public works going on in the last uh, 15 years or so in uh, Bogota and in Medellin and Colombia in general. Uh, many of these works are on architecture, but again from the uh, discipline uh, of landscape architecture, there is no doubt that uh, Diana Wiesner is uh, the most important, important actor. She has acted as a consultant for an important number of projects in the public space, for an infrastructure, uh, parks, places in, in Bogotá, in Colombia, and abroad as well. And uh, uh, she's also uh, uh, founder of uh, the uh, Fundación Cerros de Bogotá, which is the uh, uh, Bogotá Mountains Foundation, which is dedicated to the uh, preservation of the uh, mountain range that uh, establishes a boundary, an eastern boundary for the sea of Bogotá, which is, as I imagine you're going to see in her slides and in the presentation, a very important part of the uh, landscape of Bogotá and of the, uh, in general, of the uh, vital space of the capital of Colombia. Uh, she has a practice of her own. Uh, she has an office uh, under her name. And uh, she also uh, works with uh, private projects, private developers. But again, uh, she combines that with uh, public practice and with teaching in a number of universities in Colombia and uh, in other places in Latin America, Panama, uh, as well. So, with that said, uh, uh, please join me in welcoming Diana. and thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about my, my work in Colombia, especially in Bogota, and uh, to show you our focus uh, in the work of we are doing, what we are doing in Bogota. So, uh, first I I'm going to make you an introduction about Colombia. Uh, Colombia, uh, well, the Andes, uh, separate into three uh, ranges, is the most uh, biodiverse country, topographically that biodiverse country in Latin America. And uh, Bogota, it's an eight million I'm sorry, okay. Bogota with eight million people is located in a high plateau uh, uh, surrounded by mountains and small rivers. Here you can see uh, Bogota today. And this is the location of Bogota. Uh, you can see the mountainous and rural regions in green, the savanna in light green, and the city of Bogota in black. So you can see the geographic context. Uh, one thing is the natural setting of Bogota, and the other is the political division of the, of the older rural area, the savanna, where 160 uh, municipalities coexist and uh, it has a, a fragmented vision. This fragmented vision is both in a macro level and the small scale planning projects and is the most important uh, problem in the planning of the city. We have uh, a diverse population 
Bogota's population is surpasses the region surpasses eight million inhabitants, and it's the twenty one percent of Colombia's population. And the average of the population is twenty eight, so it's very young people. The Muiscas, the predominant um, pre-Columbian um, people of Cundinamarca, had a, a sacred relationship between the land with the land. I'm sorry. Bogota is a 468-old-year city, and since its foundation, it has been grown across the whole coal plain of the Andes. Traditionally, the city was surrounded by large bodies of water, and this is Bogota today. Urban development centered on streets and vehicles. Because of the booming of population, the city has not been able to keep with many basic needs. The environment has been largely ignored. So, uh, as you see, uh, the city of Bogota has been essentially a function of urban growth and the ge geographical elements have been largely ignored. So the challenge today is how to save the natural resources of the city and the region. Until now, most of the plans have been centered on the city. This is the city of Bogota. And we have mostly more than 15 plans, but it, it has been centered among the city and not on the region. But beginning the 1990s, a new urban vision was born in which the green infrastructure became a priority. So we increased the number of parts uh, of the city and the open space, that which the average is very low, uh, had increased in uh, 33%. But uh, these uh, indicators are mostly in quantity and not only in quality. So it's one of the first uh, critics that we make of our, of our work. We also participated, and I participated directly, in the urbanization plan for the city that uh, was undertaken to improve biodiversity. Another thing that helped to humanize the megalopolis is the cyclovia, which is the closing of the major thoroughfares on the Sundays and holidays, and people can make together and they can cycle, jog, and skate. I think it's one of the most uh, ecological uh, things that are done in the city, and the most important because all uh, different kinds of persons of social backgrounds get together in the weekends. However, uh, a great, uh, yet is, um, a great deal has yet to be done. There are three essential elements that must be integrated into a regional network. The mountains, the hydrological system, and the Bogota River. First, I'm going to talk about the mountains, which form the most important and border and the significance and the symbol of Bogota and the topographical <laughs> border. As we can see here, we take both uh, social and economical groups have had a devastating effect on the mountains and the mountain ecosystem has been mostly affected by urban development. Here you can see where, how was uh, in the before the foundation of the city and the city structure has been changed a lot. This is how we imagine the mountains in the night uh, in the scene of the 1500. 1500. This is the mountains in the late 1970s. And this is Bogota, the mountains today, which are uh, mostly uh, planted with non native uh, vegetation, such as eucalyptus, pine tree, and, trees and uh, acacias. These uh, three major elements are also under threat, but under check work, work, <coughs> growth. The growth is also in the, in, the, in the part beyond the mountain. Not only Bogota's pressure with seven million people uh, in the border, but other in the region of the, of the other side of the mountain. And several of our projects are being currently 
undertaking to ensure their protection and proper use. This is the proposal we made. We uh, call it like uh, the Bogota Mountain Highline or the Bogota uh, uh, Ecological Corridor of Bogota, uh, which uh, is a stretch of the mountain and is 53 kilometers long and will be like a ribbon about the border between the city and the reserve beyond. We have essentially three strategies. The social strategy, that is the most important uh, strategy in the work. Uh, this goes directly associated with the biological strategy, which is uh, to have a conservation and transformation of the border of the, of the mountain. And the last one, um, that is the consequence of the other ones, is a special strategy, which uh, you uh, get the border of the city uh, in a physical uh, space where people can go together and uh, involucrate in the recreational activities and uh, environmental activities. But it is more than a natural trail. It's a, it, incorpor it incorporates local communities and helps to involve them in conservation and sustainability of the land. So it was the, the, the border agreement, it was signed until uh, 2013. Uh, the project was proposed at, uh, seven, six years ago and it has been very hard because uh, we have been uh, with two uh, mayors that uh, didn't uh, have a political um, view about the importance of the mountains. So uh, the project, but the, the plan was approved, but uh, so we created a foundation to uh, look about the, our project. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, there is a wide uh, social background on a new agreement between the people and their immediate surroundings to encourage a change between the behavior for the terrain. Uh, we have seen in Bogota that many plans have been done and all of them are prohibiting things. But uh, we encourage that the, the work will be focused in uh, changing the attitude of the people between the land, the, the immediate land. So uh, this uh, agreement is um, a space where people can get together and can enjoy, but also uh, uh, will be enriched with the stories of the people that are living there and uh, all the transformation is, uh, is doing reality now because we are uh, working on that. So uh, this is the last uh, part of the, of the project. This is 53 kilometers long, and this is <coughs> in, the, in the south of the city. And here you can see uh, like uh, one inhabitant of, this, of the uh, neighborhood uh, talking about his life and what, uh, how it was uh, his neighbor, uh, his neighborhood. And then this is a long way. 53 kilometers long without uh, getting people out to the extremely south. So it will be a space where people can get together, but the most important thing is the people that are living now from high, high uh, social background or uh, low background will be working together in a new attitude of the land. <clears throat> so uh, this will promote an environmental culture and will change uh, and will include all the communities and will generate a communication between them. <clears throat> so water is going to be the backbone of the urban development uh, down the mountain and will uh, recover all the spaces of the water that are lost in the development of the city. High up in the mountain is the hydrological resource where the two, uh, 2,000 meters above the sea level, here is where most of Bogota water comes from. The high plains are unique ecosystems that are very near just above the city. Here you can see the city and here this a uh, unique ecosystems where the water comes from. In the south, the agriculture activities are taking pressure and putting pressure on these sacred high plains. So agriculture parks will, be, will contain and maintain these activities and these farming traditions 
from the people that come from outside of, uh, of the city. As, as also, it could be an open-air museum with very simple way of construction and recovering all the native species. As you can see, the, this is Bogota. The, uh, all the regional uh, ecosystem is very connected within the mountains and the river. So planning must be taken for a macro perspective that includes, that includes the high mountains, the Bogota River from its source, and the entire <coughs> hydrological system. <coughs> Currently, this, the rivers come from the mountains, but when they reach the city, they become concrete-like canals. And this, this, this kind of uh, infrastructure, of course, it uh, <coughs> divides the city, I'm sorry, divides the city and, uh, and it's getting a, an urban development uh, without uh, families going on and without nature and ecological function in between. So uh, we have been proposed that to take advantage of the water uh, so it may form an urban network and the communities that uh, will work surround the, the, the small bodies of water and involucrate and have, a, an, and have an hydrological network that is to recreate a, a, a network to adapt a, a new, new urban environment. This means collecting the rainwater and moving through new urban developments and going to the to the river, so the new developments will be uh, in the axis of the water, and not uh, as been has been done from the roads or the uh, urban developments. <coughs> so the result will transform not only urban planning but construction, and also will create a greater awareness of people of water of water roles in people's lives. This change is from the purely functional to something more integrated into the daily life. <clears throat> so in the future, the, the streets could have, uh, could build along um, parks, waterways, as we, we call it <coughs> as, as amphibian corridors that will be the structure of these new urban developments. So in the, in the rainy seasons, they will collect and uh, retain the water and in the dry season there will be parks uh, for recreation and for passive recreation. The Bogota River, uh, which is uh, 33, uh, 313 kilometers long and is the major element of the region of Bogota. This is Bogota and this is the Bogota River. Here is where the river is uh, you could navigate but when it's, it comes in the city, it is um, like in a harigonis. Uh, it's contained for the flooded, and mostly of the problems of the river has been in the contaminated the river and in the floods. And the Bogota River today is it turns into a sewerage. So uh, the river is not simply a natural wonder. It should be the backbone of the region and the city. So we are thinking that uh, we need to have a, a, a different perspective uh, from a long, long term. And we need to change this short term perspective from the Bogota River, which is controlling the contamination and the flooding, but to have a new integrated vision that goes beyond the short term. So the new urban developments should uh, come with the movement and the sinuosity of the, of the water that uh, comes to the river and all the border of the city uh, is not only a linear park but should be like a uh, very, um, uh, with many gradients and different scenes and recover the space of the river that he has been a very controlled uh, only for functional things. <clears throat> so we can we have to see the river and the mountains as a, as a backbone of a future development because the region is vitally connected. All the social things and the ecological are happening in the mountains and in the river 
and we always seen that they are the borders, but they are not the borders. They are <coughs> the, the structure of the region. So we need to change this kind of perspective. <clears throat> and also we need to change the culture of the Bogotas, of the citizens of Bogota, which have no contact with the water. So water has to be uh, seen in many different ways. So have uh, river parks, and uh, amphibious river parks. This is restoration of natural wetlands that have been, have been done. And uh, ecological um, life has, has taken a, 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 chan, a change. Uh, also to decontaminate the river or to facilitate some uh, of the um, decontamination of the river, we proposed uh, artificial deltas uh, that has that exist once in a time and also wetlands that will help to uh, make uh, this uh, uh, control of the water and retain and could be a future part in the urban development. And maybe the Bogota uh, River Park could be for transport and to imagine a new border of the city that has yet uh, to be done. <coughs> But, the good, but the, the good intentions between all of these um, projects are based upon the labors of a multitude of professionals that uh, becomes from many disciplines. But uh, giving them life in a, and sustainability in a nation like Colombia is difficult because we lack not only financial resources but political will and know-how. So uh, we have just... Um, uh, began the, a foundation uh, as we have seen that this, all of these projects are di is difficult to get, is to get done so uh, we began our foundation of the Cerros de Bogotá and these projects have been uh, largely published in different um, countries but the most important thing and the thing that are, we are very <coughs> happy about that is that we create a network of the social uh, groups that are doing things in the mountains of Bogota and uh, we are promoting all this kind of environmental culture and uh, giving them into the, the, the young people bring together to work and to transform their reality and not to be uh, like um, quiet in the professional in his uh, apart from the study but to have advocacy and to work for the, that the projects go on. So uh, we're working very hard with the young people and the children to make this transformation. And there, uh, and there has been many changes that are not visible in projects or infrastructure, but we are uh, trying to give uh, all of these um, transformation, social transformation into reality and to recover the sanctity of land. Here I'm going to show you uh, another strategy that I used in a small scale project uh, in our design. First, to minimize the intervention but to maximize the returns for the people. Second, to contribute the management of the biodiversity. Third, value the common and the ordinary. <coughs> and fourth, to produce diverse spaces for diverse people and the land as an instrument for the education and social content. These strategies, I, I try to use it all in my projects, uh, no matter what scale it is, but we, ca we <coughs> like to improve. So uh, this kind of perspective uh, has an um, impact, of course, in a new aesthetic uh, that I call this like an ecological aesthetic, that m many of the people are not uh, very happy with that in, in Colombia and to give more value to the local and the native. <coughs> so the first um, that I'm going to show you is this park, uh, it's in the Magdalena River. It's not in Bogota, it's uh, where the, the river of the Magdalena is one of the most important rivers of Colombia. <coughs> and in this city uh, it's the same problem that we have at the mountains that the people is not uh, having like a, a relation with the river 
So uh, mostly we proposed uh, this like an amphibian park, I call it. It's an island of 143 hectares. And we try to offer activities that bring together people and the river. And the most important thing that we made in this project is that we uh, always uh, work with economical uh, professions. So the parks uh, have sustainability, and uh, all of the proposal have to be uh, have to um, have a strategy of uh, sustainability in economic in economical things. For example. Uh, and also to bring uh, cultural things such as the uh, playgrounds of the children in the uh, Chalupa, which is a boat from the Magdalena River, and to try to design with local materials and uh, different types of, cost of construction, as this will people can get married with the space uh, that you can construct it with the vegetation. And now I'm going to show you another park. This is the Droplet Garden. It's uh, been designed for China. And uh, we have to reflect some part of Colombia. And for me, Colombia means the absence and the presence of water. So uh, the inspiration of the park be becomes for, uh, from a droplet of water. The power and the poetry of a droplet of water makes a labyrinth and the hills and the valleys which mirror the Andean landscape. So, uh, and also Colombia for us is like a labyrinth when you don't know what's going to happen the next day. So in this park you get lost between this uh, and this is the design. So we make a different path where people uh, in get lost a little bit and in the center of the park uh, we put uh, places that uh, all people come like children and in this center also we propose all the um, native species of China and try to think which were the things that we have in common from Colombia and China so there are materials uh, oh, okay. This is the land where we have to build the park, and in one year, from nothing, it, they construct a park that was in my park. It's one part of a big, a huge park of uh, 7,000 km square kilometers. My park is, was just a small part of that, and they construct all in one year. And we have in common in Colombia and China the the brick and the and the walwa, the mm -hmm. bamboo. Mm -hmm. So some kind of things are uh, like that in the park. Mm -hmm. And we make also a, a topography that is uh, uh, from excavating and having this kind of things to make the valleys and the and the mountains. Sorry. And uh, the only thing was that they didn't plant the original vegetation that we have uh, decided. They were very strange about uh, that we propose uh, all the native species from China, and they will try and ask to to plant all different European species. So it, for me it was a little pity because when we uh, be, uh, view the park, all the vegetation was different and they put what they wanted. <laughs> uh, but the, it was uh, the, the most important thing for us was that the jury of the park that they decide which was the best park was the people. After a use of one year of use, the people was voting, and the, and the one that won was the one that people liked most. So it was very nice for us uh, to know that that people liked it very much. And uh, here is the center of the. This is the 
center of the park. And we also proposed an agriculture park in the inside, which uh, mostly of the vegetation was similar to Colombia, and uh, also in, in, in the center part, but they didn't plan it. They do all the infrastructure, but the vegetation, as you see, is like, uh, it was promoting an horticultural uh, industry, so it was only flowers and flowers. <laughs> And this is uh, um, but they give the details as we put a max, Colombian a max, and they put Chinese a max, so it was nice. Also. <laughs> and this is the last project I'm going to talk to you about. This is um, uh, the Julio Mario Santo Domingo Library. This um, library of uh, this project has been very controversial because we have proposed many things that are stigmatized and prohibited in Bogota in the way that uh, public space is used. Because we have a, um, a cartilla, like a manual, of how we can do a, a public space. And we broke all the rules in this part. Because um, first, uh, the building uh, became uh, retrocedida, uh, separate from the road. Uh, to give uh, to maintain this uh, sorry to maintain these eucalyptus trees that are stigmatized everybody hates the eucalyptus but uh, they are in our memory because all of the eucalyptus have been in the all the savanna and uh, so we uh, give this space to the city and also uh, we plant uh, many kinds of uh, vegetation that it's not that doesn't need maintenance. So it's a new aesthetic that is also controversial for the people. And this um, <coughs> space is uh, to, to receive the library. This is a public library. And uh, we made this, all this experience of getting through the library in uh, uh, escalate, escalera, sorry for my English, uh, terrace that also, I'm sorry, I'm going back here. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this uh, space that is not seen here, you can ventilate all the auditorium that is for a lot of people. So uh, we proposed a carreton. This, this is this uh, grass species that is not uh, very, this is like a common species that doesn't need maintenance, but for people it's like uh, something that they don't like because they have a different aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And also we used fresh brick, like uh, this, as you see here. Here you can see the, the gravel brick that is not permitted in Bogota. It's incredible because all of the city is constructed in brick and this is a recycled <coughs> material and it, it permits the the water goes in. Ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. This is the, the gravel brick, the carreton. <clears throat> and these are the stairs. So in this part, you have a ventilation space. So the public uh, auditorium inside is ventilated, natural ventilated. And a, a handicapped person can go and have this experience to um, get together in the in the library. So it has been very controversial work in the in Bogota, uh, and we are doing this kind of works uh, because we want to uh, get a new ecological uh, way of doing things and to associate with. Uh, species that uh, grow in the, in the ground very easily and that are having a very local image of the city. So also uh, it's very nice that people can write love message in the ground that concrete doesn't. Need. And the last one uh, project is uh, this uh, project that is uh, in the, the Agora Bogota that it's inspired in the creeks, that, in, in all the weeds that grows in the creeks. 
So we have a <coughs> um, uh, reto, and um, this was like a challenge to have a, a space where the uh, to avoid a hard surface surface because it has a, a lot of pedestrian walk. And this was my first drawing about the project, <coughs> and I wanted to be very green. But this uh, first uh, floor, it has uh, a lot of hard surface. surface. Uh, the architects that are well known in Bogota, that are um, uh, Daniel Bermudez and Herreros, designed the, uh, the building. So I convinced them to put to make the, the design of the ground with, uh, with, um, I forgot, with cracks for weeds to grow. I don't know if they are very conscious about what they are doing <laughs> because I think it's going to be also very controversial because we propose all the weeds that are in the, in the ground that grows but the, and they are going to flourish in these uh, creeks and it's going to be very debatible, uh, uh, very uh, polemic, yes, yeah, very polemic uh, but it's, go it go it's going to have a new aesthetic and I think uh, the, the challenge now is that uh, we have to work in to have new perspective uh, about uh, uh, making like a socio, a partners of this kind of vegetation that we are always trying to control. So we put it by our side and we have to change that uh, kind of, uh, that kind of, uh, of work. And just to finish, uh, there is, um, I'm sorry about my English because I try to, to give it English, but uh, I, 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 I will try to encourage all the, stu all the, all the students because uh, the, our work in Colombia is, has not been very easy and the, the, the most difficult thing is that the, you can do excellent projects and have uh, ideas that uh, can transform the reality but uh, most of the times it, they get in the, in the paper and also the work of the students gets only in the library or, or in the paper. And I think there, there's, if there's a change, that there's a big change going on in, in all of the world. And, uh, and we need to, to be more involved in the change of the political, uh, of participate in more political um, way of transforming the landscape because we, ha we have not only to be a good designer of an excellent idea or be a great invest uh, investigator, but we need to, be to, to try to transform the reality of the way things are going on in, uh, in uh, countries like Colombia, where you need to involve, uh, like us, uh, we, we have these projects and has been has won many awards and many publications, but for us it's not the only the, the essential thing. We need to work on that. We have we are citizens and we have to involve in that and to change the reality. And I think the new students and the young people have to be aware of that and to and we hope that the average of uh, the citizen uh, the average of the citizens of Colombia. Uh, germinate an, a, a new awareness of what is going on and to transform the reality in this country that has a mega diverse uh, this is a, a mega diverse country so this is a, a call for you all of the students that uh, be more uh, passionate about your work and to try to transform the reality because the landscape uh, perspective is getting a, a new movement and uh, we need young people to be very encouraged and to work hard uh, with the, their conviction of uh, giving a new uh, way of doing things. Thank you very much.